All right, let me tell you, China, my God, they need saving from the West. They need saving from the oppression and the dictatorship that they live in, according to Mike Pompeo anyway. Yeah. Welcome to the Barrett Channel today. We are here in Beijing in the Forbidden City, which is one of the central, most important landmarks in China, actually. Um, so enjoy us walking around and showing you the area whilst we chat about this topic. On the Barrett Channel, we do videos all about China, factories, opinion pieces, talking about society, taking you traveling around China. So subscribe if you're into that. Anyway. So, not so long ago, Mike Pompeo made a statement that says, uh, we continue to strive to um, make the people of China's lives better. And for anybody who's spent any time in China, they will know that that is the most ridiculous statement anyone could ever make. You know, it's like, that, that it's almost trying to say to, to Western people that, Chinese people live this sort of life where they're not free to do anything or you know the government controls everything they do they're unhappy that they're, they're not happy with their government and the reality of it is very very different isn't it absolutely I mean but before I came here I will absolutely say I came here with the presumption that there was an underlying unhappiness in all of the people here that was my impression that I was given about China from the media okay and which is which is quite odd you would come in you the first time you came to China was 2008 you never stopped talking about China when you were back in England yeah and yeah that was still my impression before I came here so it's it's uh, indoctrination okay so you say that and since you've spent like probably the best part of 18 months two years here now how do you now think about that? I think it's quite funny that that's what I used to think because it seems like the vast majority of people are actually, I'm not going to say better, but live just as nice quality of life, if not better in a lot of cases, than we are used to back in England and in much of the Western world. Um, and, and, and a lot of that comes down to the simple things of life and not that expensive. Um, and you've got your, there's not really a big pr issue with safety. Let me, let me touch on those points separately. Yeah. So even if you're not on a great whacking wage, you can afford to do things like uh, travel back to your hometown because transportation is not that expensive. You can afford to eat out because you can eat at cheaper places you can eat out on the regular you can afford to go out with your friends and have a drink whereas these simple things are very expensive to do yeah I mean I, in England I, I think I think this statement that Pompeo sort of makes it comes down to the fact that Western societies can't accept that China has a different way of doing things they, they seem to have this impression that their style of democracy needs to be a universal worldwide thing and they can't accept that somewhere is different now if you look at china over the last 40 years the advancements in china are, are unparalleled anywhere in the world you know they've come from a relatively poor country that were i wouldn't say backwards but very very underdeveloped to one of the sort of worldwide powerhouses in in economic and technology terms and wealth and, and i think if you speak to a majority in fact there was a a survey done but i think it was harvard university where they they went to different country and they surveyed the people of their their sort of perception of their government oh yeah and, and i think it was around 90 percent of the people in china yeah. were happy and satisfied with, with their government and i can understand that because if you look at what over the last th you know 30 or 40 years but potentially really more so in the last 10 to 15 years what the government have given the people here in terms of, of infrastructure in terms of quality of life in terms of standard of living 
it is absolutely unparalleled anywhere you know a lot of the western countries standard of living has, has pretty much stood still yeah. for the last 10 to 15 years you know it yeah. hasn't really been and in, in a lot of cases it's actually gone backwards um because the wages haven't risen the the, the cost of living have, have skyrocketed where here as ollie alluded to just a minute ago just something as simple as travel here is absolutely cheap compared to many western countries that's because Chinese government do things for the people. It's not about making profit out of things, out of services. They, they, they're put there and provided for the people. And, you know, I, I get the feeling when I first came to China, I got the feeling that a lot of Chinese people thought like America was like amazing. You know, oh, a lot of them still do. But I actually think in, in the last four years since the the administration's been in, in, in China, you know, a lot a lot in the news and you see I think I think this coronavirus has been a turning point. That's been a massively uh, highlighted everything. Yeah. You know, it, it's highlighted the the what flaws Chinese in, people uh, perceive to be the flaws in a democracy. You know, on the TV they've seen rioting, they've seen people protesting, they've seen governments fighting, you know, different parties fighting with each other. They've seen a president who's tried to sort of rig an election, you know, and it goes on and on and on. And I think, I think a lot of people now looking at America and thinking, thank God we've got our government. Right, it just, uh, it's, I find it, it's almost an impossible task to try to, um, change the minds of people who have never been here it's really a monumental task i mean i put a, a an instagram story up the other day on my personal instagram account talking about and it, it was a quote about how um when china first started locking down because of coronavirus the west shouted about human rights issues and now a year later they're still in lockdowns as you know hundreds of thousands dead and people don't people have shut shut up about the human rights issues now and someone that i used to be very close friends with a long time ago replied saying something along the lines of um yeah but that's where the virus came from of course they're gonna um listen to the government when they're living under a dictatorship and i i I just sighed like, oh man, it's just a, a real lack of understanding. Um, and, and she's obviously another one who thought, who thinks that the Chinese people are just forced to do things because they're living under this really oppressive society mm. where in fact they just live in a different way. They have a different mindset. But if you've never been here, it's really hard to to understand that. <laughs> Hello. Hi. I think I think one of the things that is leveled um, at China from the West is this word freedom. Yeah. So they, they, they say, um, you know, Chinese have got no freedom of speech. But if you define freedom of speech as criticizing your government, then yeah, China, you would say, has no freedom of speech because it, it's, a, it's a problem to criticize your government here. But when you speak to Chinese people, they go, well, why would you want to criticize our government? Yeah, they really don't see that as a thing at all, do they? No, that, but and that's, some people might think that's because they are scared to do it. But that's not because they're scared to do it. That's because they actually don't want to, because there's no need to. They don't feel like they It's kind of a, it's a, it's a quite a comical thing, actually, to, to have that as a, uh, and a have that as ammunition saying oh you can't criticize your government when that's not something they actually w want, want to do to anyway do. i think i think it's it's <laughs> this down in chinese culture you respect your elders and you respect your leaders so i feel in in china by a majority of people not all of the people there's always going to be people with a different opinion but i think a majority of the people here respect their government and respect what the government try to do for them. And people will argue that, oh, you know, uh, policies are just forced on, on the people. Well, they're actually not 
you know, there's a number of mechanisms where where people can challenge the government. You know, through through. I, I I'm not familiar with all the ins and outs, but you can lodge complaints and they they collect sort of information. You know, they they monitor social media to see if policies. And another thing they do when when they bring a new policy, they won't roll it out all across China. What they will do, they will they will trial it in a a certain city or a certain province and then if it's popular and it works and it does well they will roll it out across the rest of China if it doesn't they, they won't uh, and I just want to mention because slow down a bit take a yeah, breath yeah I just, I just want to mention something because I want to I want to sort of um, do a lead into another video I, I want to do in, in the future about the social credit system so social credit system was was sort of trialled in a number of cities. And, you know, it, it wasn't taken on board. A lot of the things that I talked about in the West weren't, weren't taken on board um, because they just trialled them. And this is what happens a lot in the, the sort of policy here in China is that they will they will trial things. They, they won't implement it right across the... Oh, shit, it doesn't work. What, you know, one thing that uh, actually explains it very well and uh, shout out to Cyrus Jansen, great YouTube channel. On one, his uh, recent video, it was a lecture. It was, uh, say, I don't know if he pulled this quote from somewhere else or not, but it was, in China, you can't change the party, but you can change the policy. And in the West, you can change the party, but it's very, very difficult to change the policy yeah. because there's always a political football between the two parties and oh. if one of them doesn't like it then they'll do everything in their power to stop that from happening or when they eventually get into power they'll cancel those original plans yeah. whereas in China they're very forward thinking and no one's there to say no you, you can't put that policy into place so they're always adapting they're always ready for the next move they're always thinking 10 years down the line and that has uh, allowed them to get to this place where they are today yeah, well, where a lot of the Chinese people can be very proud of their country's system. You know, that, that, that's something because they haven't got this sort of change in parties every four or five years. There's more stability and long-term planning. And just before we finish up, I just want to get back to this, this sort of thing about freedom. Uh, now, freedom to many people means a lot of different things. So you'll have, you know, Chinese people they, they value the freedoms of being able to walk around in cities, feeling safe, being able to travel very inexpensively. Um, and they see that on the other side of the coin, not being free, being worried about going out into a city that you might get mugged or shot or there might be, you know, you get involved in, in riots. So this, this thing about, you know, freedom, it means it's very different depending well, on... Which yeah. side of the fence you're on? A, a, good, a good example of that is is guns. You know, a lot of Americans stand by that amendment of you know you should have the freedom to have a gun, and that's fine. But people here might perceive that as why would I want to have the freedom to have a gun when that means that I have less safety? So they they are okay to sacrifice that bit of freedom because then that gives them a different kind of freedom, which is safety. So it's just. It, if you only stand on the perspective of one side, you'll never ever open your eyes to how other people might see it. Yeah. I, mean, I, th I, think, I think it's down to this thing that, you know, I, I think Western countries have got to stop thinking that the, the, the d democratic system that they have has to be something that everywhere else around the world adopts. Just leave China alone to do its own thing. It's working for them and the people are very, very happy with it. I just you know. a last point as well, actually, is um, it's it's uh, it's it's kind of pushed into the Western narrative that China wants to overtake the world. They oh, want that's to. That's just so they, funny. They they, they, they want to sort of um, push their. Uh, systems into other countries, but actually it's not like that at all. <laughs> they really, really don't have, they don't give a shit about what other countries are doing. They do them, and yeah. um, you know that's that they, they grow their internal market, and that's all they need to yeah. do. They're well, not worried about spending, uh, you know, massive on amounts on military budgets to, yeah. you know. Uh, go into other countries. They're not doing that. Yeah, well, that's, that's, that's to say, that's the only statistic you've got to look at. How many countries have China tried to force regime change on? 
kind of non. How many countries of America and its allies in the West tried to force regime change on? Numerous. On that note, I'm sure this will muster up a lot of uh, conversation in the comments, so do let us know. Even if we don't reply to them all, we definitely, either one of us, read it. Um, so thank you very much. Like this video if you enjoy these walk and talks and you want us to show you more places around China. As always, for now, take, take care. care.